Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and the penultimate episode of my MotoGP Rider Crewman and today we are here for the penultimate race at Malaysia. Now I'll see the penultimate episode regarding this season. There will be another season of this however I'm going to take a break um, you know with the release of F1 2018 I want to focus on that as my channel is still core F1 in essence and I will come back to MotoGP further on down the line. The break won't be as long as last time maybe in a couple of months who knows maybe even less than that it really depends on how things go with F1 2018 but for now we're going to enjoy these last two episodes and for this race going into Malaysia a big change happened in the championship in the last race if you didn't watch it check it out at Philip Island the card in the top right hand corner of your screen because it was a major shift in the championship and we've gone into these last two races with a prayer and an outside chance of still maybe winning the championship. Now that's a sort of spoiler. Uh, I'm going to show you the standings now. This is a complete spoiler, so if you do want to click off the video, please do. But as we look at the standings, Dobby leads. He's 16 points ahead of us with two races to go. Now we're going to Malaysia today, which is the race that we're at. Realistically speaking, at Malaysia, I've always gone well at and I've always had good pace. So I, that, is a, that is a winnable race for me from my past experience. I mean, I could be completely wrong. And, you know, we might even get into, Q into Q2, so um, that could happen. But I do think we have some great pace at Malaysia. I think we're going to do okay there. I have been very quick in the past. However, Valencia, the next race in the next episode, the finale, is a track that we struggle with. So it's very important that we do do well in this race and gain as many points as possible on Dovi. And let's hope he doesn't get second place at least, at least get third or fourth, something like that, to give us a decent chance in the last race. But let's see how it goes. It's going to be interesting. First of all, though, let's get ourselves into Q2. Or potentially, we could be into Q1. Who knows? Let's get into practice and let's see how things go for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Right then, straight into Q2. I can tell you we are really, really quick around here. Nearly two seconds faster in practice than anybody else. Whether that does change in qualifying, I'd expect it to. However, I do feel very confident that we can get the job done around here. Let's get into it and let's see where we line up on the grid. I can tell you, in practice, we got into the 1 minute 54s. So with that in mind, this is going to be a fairly straightforward one, I think. That's over corner cut. Never mind though, I don't think it's going to affect us too badly in a sense. I'm not going to gain that much time. Out of the final corner. It's been an absolutely perfect lap. No real mistakes, nice and tidy, and up to the line of 54.8, 2.3 faster than Marquez. I think that's what we're going to call it on our first lap. We are so quick around here, it's unbelievable. Such a long lap and so much time to gain. That's going to be a pole for us, I'm pretty sure of it. That's the end of the second and last qualifying session, and we can finally see the grid positions that await us in tomorrow's Grand Prix. Here we are live from the MotoGP class starting grid, where riders and engineers are talking over the last few details before the start of the race. 
It is race time here in Malaysia. Dovi starts P3. We are P1. I can already tell you the qualifying timers weren't representative because in the warm-up, Marquez alone managed to go a whole second faster and do a 56.1. So, um, you know, based off of that, that is still 1.3 for my qualifying time. But, you know, a whole second is a big difference. And we are going to drop back in race pace. So if the AI are doing low 56s, I'm probably going to go maybe up to the high 55s would be my guess. So I'm still going to have the edge, but it's going to be a lot closer. For this race, though, we are going to revert back to the old tactic of the hard tyres, um, at least on the rear. I'm going to go for a medium front, not a soft, um, because this is very, very hard on tyre weather circuit. So I want to have, make sure we have plenty of rear end on, on the bike. But overall, I'm looking forward to it. P1. We've got to try and get a semi-decent start. We are going to drop back. We never seem to get a, a perfect start. So uh, let's just try and get a respectably average one and then work our way back through the field and try and get to the front as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's get into the race and uh, let's see how this Malaysian Grand Prix gets underway. The Sepang track is ready to welcome this latest edition of the Malaysian Grand Prix. Just a few moments to go until the riders battle away on track. Right then, let's get the assists off and get ready for the five red lights. Lights out and away we go here at Malaysia and it's a pretty good start actually. Not too bad at all. Dobby is off to an absolute flyer in the Ducati as expected. But into turn one we're going to go straight back up the inside. A little bit of a drift mid corner. Running a little bit deep. Coming back underneath for turn two. Got to be careful here. Being on the curb is always risky. Stand the bike up. Right on the outside. There we go. Plenty of grip here. Plenty of tarmac to make the moves. Lost a few more places, but that's not to be concerned. Valentino going very shallow into the apex here. We have to push him through because I was, I was going in very hot. I was going to make the move, but Valentino wanted to make the moves as well. So we just had to try and follow him and push him through. I like this so far. Free and quick. Oh, Vignale is extremely aggressive up the inside there. We're turning the favour from turn four. We're going to go up the inside of him now. Yeah, again here. Into the double apex right. Vignales though, on here on the outside, fair play. We're going to go up the inside again though, squeeze him out. Nice little move there, Dobby leads the way, which is exactly not what I wanted. I'm hot, I'm very hot into the hairpin here. Bring it back, bring it back, there we go. Nice, that was a good little save. Just avoided going onto the grass, just about, which was critical. Zarko on the outside here, a uh, little bit too much curb action. There we go, beautifully done. This is the one corner of the track where I seem to struggle a bit. Because the AI go extremely tight and I seem to take the F1 line which is a lot more wider. And then you come back into the late apex. Although that wasn't too bad. P7 now at the end of lap 1 pretty much. One more corner to negotiate which is the final corner. Which I absolutely hate because it's off camber and it's so awkward. A million different lines you could take through here and oh my god. Valentino Vinales almost took each other out completely. Valentino getting absolutely done dirty on the outside line. We're picking up the toe here on the doctor. Up the inside into turn one. Very hot on the brakes. Can we get it down to the apex? Yes, we do. That is beautiful. All this battling going up ahead here. And Dobby is just starting to edge away, which is not ideal for us. We need to uh, get with it. There's Marquez in P5. He's dropping back a bit, so he seems to be in the wars at the moment with all this AI at the moment. Into turn four, Marcus goes up the inside of two bikes, his teammate and, Vi and Vinales, it seems. And he's got the move done, fair play to him. We're starting to now pick up the pace here. We've left Valentino behind. And we're now starting to really put the pressure on. A little bit of contact with Pedroza, there's becoming a little bit hot into that corner. This is the section where I do gain a lot of time. A little bit of first gear by accident there, didn't mean that at all. I have to be careful with the curb here. There we go, not too bad. We can get this move done, I think, fairly swiftly. I feel confident. Into the hairpin, bring the bike back up nice and early. Look at that. Vinales is absolutely all over the place. Can we go on the outside of Marquez here? Surely not. Pedroza takes the inside. I'm going to switch right back underneath Pedroza though. Nice little switch back. Up the inside of Mark. Jack Miller's P2. Geez, I thought it was Petrucci. Wow, what an incredible performance from Jack Miller so far. Fair play. There we go. Getting it on the apex. On the power. Let's see how we fare against these Ducatis now. We've done quite a few engine upgrades. 
And you can see we are keeping up a lot better now. Middles and really pulling away here into the final corner on the inside. It's a late move. I'm going to go very wide. But I'm going to get the exit, hopefully. Maybe not. Too much of a wheelie there. There's Vinales again. He's come back out of nowhere. Where are the Hondas? With P4, the Hondas have disappeared. I don't know what's happened there, but... Up the inside of Maverick. Nicely done. Beautiful. Yeah, they're down to 7th and 8th, the Hondas, so... Something happened to those guys, but... I'm not complaining. Vinales on the inside. Doesn't quite make it stick, though. We're as wide as wide can be through there. Into turn four. There we go. Really getting close to Jack Miller now. This is time for the move, I think. Getting very close. And we're just going to set up the bike for a cheeky little lunge up the inside. There it is. Beautiful, to be fair. Miller took a much tighter line than I expected, but we still got it done. Up next is Dovi, the championship rival. If we win and he comes second, we only gain 5 points and it'll be 11 points difference going to the last race, which is still going to be a steep hill to climb, so realistically speaking, we still need Dobby to not finish in second if possible, but let's just do our job for now and try and uh, get past the Ducati rider and take it from there. So here we go, feeding the bike through this section, beautifully done there, on the power nice and early, into the chicane, getting very close. Up the inside of Dobby here. Very nice. That was an absolute phenomenal move. Line that one up to perfection. Dobby back up the inside. But we're going to pick up the traction. Look at that. We're going to cut across him. Can we stay ahead of this Ducati? Look at that. Yes, we can. We can match Dobby on the straights, which is fantastic. Oh, no. This is going to be hot. This is going to be extremely hot. Keep it on the tarmac, at least. Okay, that was a nice little save. If we go into the grass, we're pretty much dead. Luckily, though, we kept it on the tarmac. So we're going to have to re-overtake Dovi again. Just completely got my brake in, misjudged. Which can happen. Oh my god, wow, from absolutely miles back. Didn't expect to go for that move, but the gap just opened up. Dovi re-overtakes, fair enough. We're going to get him here, I think. Turn four is going to be the one. Or turn three. Uh, that's, that's very wide. Much wider than last time. On the outside of turn four, on the power. Now we're gonna swoop right back underneath here. Close quarters action. And Dovi holds on. He's doing well here. He's defending now a little bit. Aggressive move up the inside this time though. And that was exactly the move that was needed. Now we're in the lead. We've already got a nice little gap to the Dovi already, so now's our chance to pull away here into the hairpin. Let's get this perfect and then take it from there. There we go, beautiful. Right, let's start running away with this now. My pace is absolutely brilliant right now. I'm absolutely in the zone. 54.8, far south of the race. And into pretty much the qualifying times I was doing, so... Really just setting the pace alight and a convincing performance so far. Dovi's still P2 though, which is unfortunate. I really wish someone would catch him. I mean, Vignales is catching him, but will he get him before the end of the race? I'm not really sure. Right then, on to the last half of the Grand Prix here. Let's bring this one home, and this will be five race wins in a row. Right then, here we go. Last half of the race, on to the final corner. It's been a dominant performance from us, and we've absolutely deserved it after a bit of a dodgy start. We've recovered nicely, and at the final corner, we're going to come home to win the Malaysian Grand Prix and make it five race wins in a row and put ourselves right into championship contention going into the last race of the season at Valencia. Dovi ultimately finished P2, but let's have a look at the final race results. Before going to the podium award ceremony, let's take a look at the final MotoGP race results. And there we have it then, Dovi second ahead of Vinales Marquez in fourth. And that does mean for the championship, Mark Marquez is now out of the contention and mathematically cannot win the championship now after he is now more than 25 points out of Dovi's lead. We go into the last race 11 points behind Dovi and realistically speaking, we are going to need a bit of a miracle. Um, I've got no idea what the pace is going to be like. The last five races, we've won them all. 
So we have to believe we can win the next race, but historically the last two seasons in Moto3 and Moto2, we've not gone well. I think even the Red Bull Rookies Cup, I think we raced there and we didn't go well. So um, it's going to be interesting. And in terms of the Riders' Championship, sorry, the, the Constructors' Championship, 17 points behind Ducati with one race to go. It's going to be pretty impossible. I think Ducati have got this one wrapped up. And finally, in the Team Championship, I think maybe Repsol and Yamaha are going to be the only two changes here. They might switch positions potentially. Um, that's going to be the only battle then, but we are finishing fourth, which is a fantastic result for us as a team. But anyway, that has been it for this episode, guys. We're now going to move into the final upgrades on this Aprilia bike. Right, then we have 35,000 points to spend. So, I think we're looking at probably two frame upgrades. I think these are the two that are going to really help me out the most. Um, it helps the bike in its weak spot, so uh, we're going to go for those, and that is going to be the front upgrades we put on this bike, and it's going to be interesting, we go into Valencia, positive, let's see what we can do, you never know, miracles do happen, Dobby fell off in Japan, so it can happen, but it's going to be realistically a challenge, but anyway guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, drop a like on the video, also do get subscribed for Daily from 1 and MotoGP content, turn on notifications to not miss a single video from me, and finally check out these two videos on screen if you have missed them, other than that, thank you for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video very soon, goodbye.